All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and the continuation of our BCBA practice exam series. This is exam number seven, and we're going through the next set of questions together. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Please subscribe. Check out behavioranalyststudy.com for all of our study materials, including our combo pack and practice exams. When you pass, please let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's get going. For every game this year, Lamar ties his right shoe first, followed by his left shoe, and then drinks half a bottle of Gatorade because he says he plays better when he does this routine. Lamar is now expected to win most valuable player for his performance this year. In ABA terms, what explains the relationship between Lamar's routine and his performance? So we're looking at this in terms of how we would speak about it using ABA language. And this is how you should approach every question because we want to start making the use of terminology natural when discussing problems. Now, if we're teaching parents or talking to stakeholders, we want to avoid using jargon. But when you're talking with other professionals or technicians, you want to use ABA terminology when possible. So in ABA terms, what explains this relationship? Because Lamar, he ties his right shoe first, his left shoe, and then drinks half a bottle of Gatorade because he says it helps him play better. And results say it may help him play better because now he's going to win most valuable player. However, we know as behavior analysts that there might be a simpler explanation other than the order of how Lamar ties his shoes and drinks his Gatorade affects his play. And so if you were to describe this in ABA terms, what would you say? A, Lamar is superstitious. Now, if I was talking to a stakeholder, I might describe somebody as superstitious because they know what that means. And all superstition is, in ABA terms, is a contiguous relationship between behaviors and outcomes. In this case, the relationship is contiguous, meaning there's a closeness of Lamar engaging in this routine and then going out and playing well. Doesn't mean there's a functional relationship between the routine and playing well. Maybe, maybe not. We can't say for sure. We haven't done the experiment, but what we do know is there is a contiguous relationship leading to this superstitious nature of Lamar. Now, what about Lamar's performance is reinforced by his routine? Well, we can't say that because the routine is an antecedent, right? It's not a consequence. And in order for it to be reinforcement, it needs to be a consequence. And then Lamar's routine has no relationship to his performance whatsoever. Now, that's a very strong statement. We don't know that for sure. Now, being parsimonious we would likely say, well, there's it's very unlikely there's a functional relationship between how he ties his shoes and how he plays, but we haven't done the experiment and behavior is determined. So we don't want to say, well, there's no relationship whatsoever. So the best answer, given the information, is that the relationship is contiguous. There's a closeness between the routine and the performance leading to, if we were describing this another way, Lamar's superstition but we are describing using ABA terminology, so we will simply say the relationship is contiguous. Alexis has a massive project due next Wednesday. She knows the best way for her to complete the project is by accomplishing all her other tasks first, which will give her the whole weekend to focus just on the project. If Alexis does not first accomplish her other tasks, she will end up procrastinating and avoiding her work all weekend. What dimension of behavior analysis is likely represented relative to Alexis completing the task and her accomplishments. So we have a dimension question, and with dimension questions, we want to be very precise, but we also need to understand that with dimensions, there's very often crossover, and so we need to pick the dimension that's really most relevant to the information given. So what do we know so far? Well, we know Alexis has this massive project, and she has a strategy for completing the project, which is focusing or which is completing all her other tasks first, which will allow her to focus just on the project. She knows if she accomplishes her other tasks first, then she can get her project done. However, if she does not first accomplish her other tasks, she will end up procrastinating and avoid her work all weekend. So let's think about that. Alexis is manipulating her behavior, right? Because she knows if she gets her other tasks done first, then she can focus on the project. If she doesn't, she'll avoid her work 
all weekend. And so what dimension is Alexis demonstrating here? A, being conceptually systematic. Do we use any behavior analytic terminology here? We don't. We don't actually know what sort of concepts Alexis is using. We just know she has control over her behavior through this strategy of accomplishing her tasks first, which then gives her the weekend to focus on the project. So is, is Alexis demonstrating generality? Well, has Alexis generalized to any settings or scenarios or other stimuli? Well, not that we can tell. It doesn't seem to be associated with generalization here. What about analytic? Is there any sort of functional relationship here? Is she Does she have control over certain aspects of behavior? And it appears she does, because if she can accomplish her other tasks, this will allow her to focus on her project. If she does not, she will end up procrastinating and avoiding her work all weekend. So accomplishing these other tasks first seems to have control over whether or not she gets the project done. There appears to be this analytic relationship going on. Now, what about technological? Is anyone trying to replicate what Alexis is doing? No. Technological says we design and write intervention and strategies so other trained professionals and practitioners can use those strategies. It doesn't appear that anyone is trying to replicate what Alexis is doing. So since we can't really say she's being conceptually systematic or not, there's no generalization going on, and she's not attempting to be technological, then it seems like the best dimension in play here is going to be analytic, given the fact that she has this control over her behavior by either accomplishing the task or not. Cindy's dance instructor tells her class that she will hold an optional practice on Saturday. Cindy and her classmates know that optional really means they must show up to practice or else they'll likely lose stage time at the upcoming rehearsal because missing any practice leads to less stage time. Optional practice is functioning as a what? Assuming less stage time is a bad thing for the students. So we're looking at optional practice in the context of this scenario. And we're assuming that losing stage time is bad. So the students, they don't want to lose the stage time. And so when you've got a behavioral scenario like this, and they're wanting you to focus on something specific about the scenario, you have to look at the context around it, just like we would in a real life situation. Context matters. And the students' consequences, they matter. So we know that Cindy's dance instructor says there's an optional practice. Cindy and your classmates say, well, optional means they really need to show up or they'll lose stage time. And they don't want to lose stage time. And so when the coach says optional practice, what is that saying to the class? Well, it's saying or signaling to the class that there's punishment available. Because when I say, or when the dance instructor says optional practice, what that really means is they need to show up. If she holds an optional practice and then no one shows up, then they will be punished. So optional practice is signaling to the class that punishment is now available. And so optional practice is functioning as a what? SD for reinforcement. Well, it's not signaling reinforcement is available because it doesn't say what happens if they show up to practice. All we know is if they don't show up to practice, well, they lose stage time, which they don't want to do. And so the optional practice is signaling to them, well, not showing up is going to be punishing. There is punishment available for not showing up. And that punishment is losing stage time. And so optional practice is the SD for punishment is signaling punishment is now available. Is it the motivating operation? Well, not necessarily. They already know they must show up to practice. So the optional practice doesn't change the fact that they need to show up to practice. The value is already high for showing up to practice, given the consequence of not showing up. And then an S delta for punishment. Well, an S delta is the opposite of an SD because an SD signals something's available, and as Delta does not. So assuming less stage time is bad for the students, optional practice is functioning as a SD for punishment. Remember, motivating operations increase and decrease values of consequences, while SDs signal consequences are available, or sometimes if it's an S Delta, an S Delta does not signal consequences are available. You've got to know those distinctions. They're going to ask you about MOs and SDs and S deltas. And when the coach says optional practice, well, that's the signal that 
punishment is available if we miss this practice. Each morning, the residents who live in an adult home are supposed to put their orders in for breakfast using a preset menu. Timothy always forgets to put his order in, so his nurse places the menu right on top of his laptop each night. This way, Timothy will see the menu prior to getting on his computer in the morning. What type of prompt is the nurse using? When you think about prompts as a BCBA, you want to first think in terms of stimulus prompts and response prompts. Now, stimulus prompts and response prompts are the two umbrellas the rest of the prompts live under. For example, response prompts might be physical prompts, modeling prompts, gestural prompts. With response prompts, we're focused on manipulating and evoking the response. With a stimulus prompt, we are going to focus on and manipulate the stimulus in question. And so those can be positional prompts. They can be magnitude prompts, so we can change the size of the prompts. They can We can change the shape of the prompts to color. We're changing the stimulus in some way. And so in this case, what is the nurse focused on? Because the residents who live in the adult home, they're supposed to put their orders in for breakfast. And then Timothy always forgets to put his order in. So what does the nurse do? Well, she places the menu on top of his laptop. What has the nurse done? Well, she's manipulated this stimulus. She's, she's moved this stimulus, which is now acting as the prompt for Timothy to put his order in. And so the nurse has focused on the stimulus, and she's done it with a positional prompt. And so what type of prompt is the nurse using? Because Timothy will now see the menu prior to getting on the computer. Well, the nurse is using that A stimulus prompt. Why is it not a response prompt? Well, she's not physically prompting Timothy. She's not modeling it for Timothy. She's not gesturing to Timothy. She's manipulating the stimulus. And so if we look at gestural models, well, that's just types of response prompts. So again, as BCBAs, you want to first think of prompts in terms of stimulus prompts and response prompts. And then you want to go from there. What type of stimulus prompt? What type of response prompt? Ernie's parents are very strict on Ernie and require him to practice the guitar every night. In order for Ernie to see his friends on the weekend, each night Ernie must practice for either one full hour or he must play three songs to perfection. What type of schedule is Ernie on? We have a reinforcement schedule question. And when you have two basic schedules of reinforcement or more, we call these compound schedules. So Ernie is on some sort of compound schedule. So what do we know? We know Ernie must practice the guitar every night. If he wants to see his friends, which is the consequence, he must practice for one full hour or he must play three songs to perfection. So what we have is a interval schedule and a ratio schedule and Ernie must complete one or the other. So what compound schedule requires the learner to complete either a ratio or an interval? Well, A, an alternative schedule. An alternative schedule is that either or. You either need to complete the interval schedule or you need to complete the ratio schedule. How does that differ from conjunctive? Well, conjunctive, you must complete both. So if Ernie had to practice for the full hour and play three songs, that would be conjunctive. This is not chained because Ernie does not need to complete these schedules in a set order. And it isn't concurrent because we only have one behavior. Ernie can either do one schedule or the other, but the behavior is the same. Concurrent is when there's two behaviors going on concurrently with two different schedules. Not the case here. In this case, Ernie must either practice for one full hour or he must play three songs to perfection. Therefore, Ernie is on this alternative schedule. You're eagerly waiting to hear back from a recruiter about a potential job opportunity. Your recruiter told you that they would set up a meeting with you via email, and that email would come Tuesday between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. You're checking your email every 10 minutes, but still no email. What type of reinforcement schedule is this? All right, so just so happens we get back-to-back -back reinforcement schedule questions. Don't get freaked out on the exam if you get two questions back-to-back -back that are very similar in subject matter. Or let's say you answer six questions in a row and you picked D for all the questions. That type of stuff doesn't matter. You're not there to argue with the exam or try to dictate the exam. You're there to answer each question correctly. That's all you're worried about. So we have back-to-back -back reinforcement schedule questions. 
Good. Reinforcement schedules are pretty easy. These are two easy points. We answer the questions. We move on. So what type of reinforcement schedule are we looking at here? Well, in this case, the recruiter is going to send you an email, and the email is going to come between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. So you've only got one schedule here, so we don't have a compound schedule. We just have one basic schedule. Now, you're checking your email every 10 minutes, but still not getting an email. Does it matter how many times you check your email? No, it's not going to make the email come any faster. And so is this a ratio schedule? Well, it's not because a ratio schedule is dependent on a number of responses. You could check your email 1,000 times, but it's not going to get there until a certain time has elapsed. So the ratio has nothing to do with it. What we're worried about is the interval. And so is this fixed or variable? Well, it's going to be variable because it can be any time between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Just depends on when this potential recruiter or this recruiter sends the email. And so fixed implies that time is, is always set. So if that recruiter sent emails out every morning at 11 a.m., that is fixed. Not the case. They can be anywhere from 10 to 2 p.m. It could be 10, 10, 30, 11, 45, so on and so forth. And so type of schedule you're looking at, not only an interval schedule, but a variable interval schedule. And so we can eliminate A and B because it's not a ratio. It doesn't matter how many times you check your email. It isn't a fixed interval because it's between these times. So it has to be D, a variable interval. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe for all of our videos. We do three videos a week on BCBAs. We also have our RBT videos, so be sure to share those with all your technicians. Check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for study materials, including combo packs and practice exams. Let us know when you pass. Work hard. Study hard. See you soon.